Thanks for joining me today. I'm Jarrell from Sungrand, the developer of Silver Falls, and today I wanted to share with you my philosophy and my process for designing the visuals of a Silver Falls character. So when I'm designing a character, I uh, generally consider uh, those characters as a person. I don't just think they're a character in a video game, I'll just come up with some quick traits and that's it. I like to think of this person in terms of their philosophy, their views on life, and how that would influence their uh, fashion choices and their fashion and their visual uh, design and their visual look. I like to create a visual design for characters that's identifiable and that I can use to create different outfits for that character so that they can very easily and quickly be identified. So. For example, I pretty much only wear plaid shirts uh, and jeans, and that's my look. There's a lot of different kind of plaid shirts you can get, a lot of different colors, uh, and uh, that's just uh, what I like to wear. So if I went walking down the street one day and I was wearing a, a bright pink windbreaker jacket with, with neon stripes on it, my friends likely would not identify me. They would probably walk right past me and not even notice uh, I was there. And so I, I try to keep that in mind when I'm designing my characters and that they are a part of a visual medium. And that means that they need to be able to be identified by the audience very quickly. You shouldn't need uh, to tell the viewer or the audience or the player who it is or what it is the player should be able to identify each character very quickly and immediately. And because Silver Falls characters um, appear in different games, in very different visual styles on all different platforms and mediums, uh, I take a lot of care in making sure that the characters can be identified. So what I want to focus on first as an example, and please pardon if uh, Unity is just a little bit jumpy, that's just how it navigates. Let's see. So we have two different versions of Dodger Rogers. One might be more familiar to players. This is an HD version of his appearance in Three Down Stars, but we have a new uh, camouflage pattern that I've created. Uh, I just have a bit of, of modeling work to do here around the shirt, around the neck. It's just slightly uh, some errors that I'll need to fix. But when I'm creating the design for a character, and don't mind how shiny the boots are. Uh, I'll fix that later. When I'm creating the design for a character, I generally focus on two things. The first is texture, and the second is color. So when I say texture, I don't mean, oh, this is a 3D model and it has a texture on it. By texture, I mean the material of that character's item of clothing and the condition of that. So. We'll focus on this. You can see it's uh, quite a, an outdoorsy, uh, rugged, tough material, but it's in good condition. So you can see he's a character who likely takes care of himself, takes care of his clothes, um, and his color is quite neutral, and he looks comfortable outdoors. He has a hat that seems to blend in quite well with the color of the sky. He has very earthy uh, pants and boots, which again, are, don't don't mind how shiny they are. That's just a that's not important. And uh, he has uh, a camouflage pattern, like a signature pattern on his jacket that makes him look quite at home in nature outside. So he appears to be quite a, an outdoorsy, rugged sort of fellow. Let's go ahead and have a look at this character back here, a character named Brad Godoshio, who has not appeared in a Silver Falls title yet, but he will be appearing uh, in Campfire Stories. So when we look at Brad, right off the bat, we'll compare his design to Dodger, and you can see there's a very clear and distinct uh, difference between their designs. So the character of Brad is wearing materials that are quite modern. They're all uh, synthetics, they're nylon. Uh, yeah, they're quite modern. And you can see that he's quite physically fit, and he has colors that really pop, that are quite uh, dynamic and bright. The pattern on his clothing is designed to look asymmetrical but dynamic, to let you know that maybe he isn't totally balanced, 
uh, but he is quite active and he, he likes to move. Uh, so visually you can discern that sort of information uh, based on the, you sort of blur your eyes and look at it and you go, okay, I, I can kind of see a character there. And so uh, when I create other outfits for him, this is a visual identity that I can always um, draw from to make sure that he's recognizable. And based on his materials and the condition of his clothes, you can see that he's likely has a very modern attitude. He doesn't wear uh, traditional, you know, things like leather and whatnot. They all seem to be modern materials. He's uh, physically fit, so he likely spends time outside, but he doesn't look very rugged. He doesn't have the uh, rough uh, presentation or the rugged presentation that other characters have. We'll go ahead and have a look at Iron Austin here. And again, he's designed so that at a glance you can get an idea, a clear idea of who he is and what his life is like. You can see his uh, clothing is, is a bit worn. The cloth is a bit old. It's not pristine. It's quite tattered. His hat is also quite tattered. It's a bit dirty. And you can see his overalls are quite rough as well. There's a rough texture to him. So it gives off, it visually communicates a character who's quite rugged, quite rough, uh, and maybe necessarily doesn't take the best care of himself, and he doesn't, maybe doesn't care too much about his, uh, his visual presentation and how he looks. Uh, he's got leather shoes, uh, which gives off a sense of ruggedness and outdoorsiness. And I like to use uh, metal components to have elements on characters that pop that help give them a visual dynamic appeal. So say for example you have this um, very shiny zipper on Dodger that again helps break up the visual um, elements of his character to make them interesting. Especially in Silver Falls games you explore environments that are have very dynamic lighting that can be quite dark and you can have a very powerful light source like a campfire spotlight and so i make it a point of having uh parts of characters designs that can shine and catch light because it makes it interesting to see that character and as they move around it helps give more life to that character now when we look at dodger i want to discuss um a visual identity and having um, sort of consistency with that. So these are two different outfits for Dodger. This one has not appeared in a game yet, and this is actually um, the design for Dodger as he will appear in our upcoming Wii U game. That will be a Wii U exclusive white inside its Umbra. And you can see he has the same camouflage pattern. And no, I didn't do that because uh, it's lazy and easy. Uh, I have the same camouflage pattern because uh, it's his favorite camouflage pattern. So uh, it, when you see the character in context and you see the character multiple times and you see that he has different articles of clothing with the same hunting pattern, then you don't need to have Dodger say, look at the shirt. This is my favorite hunting pattern. I have five shirts that look like this. The player can then infer and see for themselves visually. Oh yeah, okay, that guy must really like those hunting pattern shirts, very likely he's a hunter. You don't have to have this character say, I go hunting four or five times a year. He's shown you. And I try to keep the colors consistent unless I have a very good reason to um, change up the colors on characters. Uh, but visually, he's easy to identify. It's quite quick to identify. You know that He's not wearing the exact same thing. He looks quite different. And what I've done is actually inverted the uh, denim of his hat. So now that's the same color of his pants. And I've inverted his um, cargo pants here. And now his uh, cap here has the same color as his uh, cargo pants. And then again, I need to go in here into the um, 3D model. I just need to cut the tops of those boots off so that you don't see it. So uh, just ignore that. So this model is almost done, just a little bit of work in progress. He has a leg holster here, which I will be attaching a gun holster to. So this is uh, one part of his character that shows that he isn't necessarily stuck in the past. Uh, nylon is 
uh, I use that as more of a modern um, visual storytelling element to show that that character is sort of into modern technologies and, and uh, they're not necessarily stuck in the past. Uh, you can uh, have another item uh, mounted into this a holster here. I'll probably put a knife or something else in there. So he's all set. So that's what I, I keep in mind and, and that's what I talk about, uh, what I mean when I talk about having a, a consistent uh, visual identity for a character. Let's go ahead and uh, have a look at Holt. So this model here isn't totally complete. Let's just go ahead and, and oh, hello. Right, go ahead and bring him forward a little bit. All right, so anyone, okay, cool, thanks Unity, that was nice. So anyone who's played Three Down Stars will probably notice there's a couple things missing from our guy here. Let's go ahead and turn those gizmos off too. So primarily what's missing is the broken watch that he hangs um, from his pants and the uh, bandana, the American flag bandana that he normally has hanging there. So this is just a, a workspace while I uh, create these HD versions of these characters. Um, but with the leather jacket, you have the um, visual idea of a character who probably is pretty tough and pretty rugged. He has a sort of artistic um, decal on his back here. You have the two angels, the six bullets, and the slogan, keep yourself alive. All right. And so you have a character who, when you have angels on your, your jacket there, uh, it probably means that you're someone who's pretty comfortable with himself. You're not worried about someone pointing at the back of your jacket and go, oh, you got some girly angels in there. So you probably have someone who's pretty confident with themselves and has, a, has some reasonable sense of, of security in, in who they are. And they don't necessarily care about judgment. They just want to wear what they like. They want to like what they like, and it doesn't really matter. Now, this is one element. Uh, it was floating up there for a uh, funny long story. Uh, there we go. That's looking more like our main man, Holt. So that, those his signature headphones with the Trisonus logo. His signature headphones show that he's into music, obviously. Why w wouldn't uh, he be into music if he's wearing these headphones? Uh, but it also ties into his character in that he is a um, composer. So obviously he would be into music. And one of his alternate outfits in Three Down Stars actually has him wearing the headphones over his ears. You know, however, however it is. Uh, there we go. And so it's, I use cloth. These uh, cloth is a very neutral material. So I use that as a sort of... Uh, uh, when you have a, uh, say for example, a painting or a photo, you don't just fill that painting or fill that photo with detail. You need to have negative space as well uh, to help give focus to the things that matter. And generally, I use cloth material as a very neutral uh, blank or negative space in terms of the visual design for the character, and that lets the other elements breathe. That helps his uh, jacket and his headphones and the broken watch that he normally carries. Um, it helps those elements uh, stand out on their own as well. You might notice a few characters on here um, that are from Three Down Stars that are now in much higher quality. Uh, and you will notice characters that uh, haven't been uh, seen anywhere else and haven't even appeared in any games or mentioned at all before. Okay, so. Anyone reading Three Down Star, um, sorry, anyone reading Heavy Shadow uh, might recognize, well, actually, no, they wouldn't recognize he hasn't appeared before, but this is the character um, Rauno. So this is Dodger's friend, and he's got a Falcon Fang shirt. He's uh, got his sleeves rolled up to show that he's very um, hands-on. Um, looks pretty cool when it has a physics animating there. He's got shorts and sort of a short sleeve, and he has a very hands-on, active look to him. Uh, don't want to talk too much about the character, uh, since I want people to discover the characters themselves in context if they've never seen them before. 
All right, who else we have here? Here again, another character from Heavy Shadow is Fort Fordero. I think we've shared maybe one or two images uh, on our social media. This is a character I I generally am quite light on the use of logos and branding on characters, and any branding and logos that feature on characters' clothing exist in the lore of Silver Falls. There's stuff that I've written specifically for Silver Falls. This is a brand called Extra Wet. Um, and if anyone would like to look look up this Japanese text and figure out what it says, be my guest. So the character of Fort, his primary color, I wanted his primary colors to be purple and white. And he sort of have the brown to help uh, give a sense of outdoorsiness and groundedness. He has these uh, leather boots. He carries the knife with him. And you have thermal... Uh, undershirt which is too shiny so I'll go ahead and fix that so it gives an idea of a character who is likely tries to stay prepared you know he if he gets caught outside in the cold he's got an undershirt to keep him warm uh, he's got pockets to store things if he needs them he's got these tough looking boots so he's a character that likely spends time outside and likely knows how to prepare himself and, and sort of to prepare for things and he likely is a character that doesn't get caught unawares and you can generally get that sense from looking at that design all right here's a character that we've seen in three down stars on the 3ds and oh but we haven't seen her in this outfit before she was wearing a um a moose steak festival shirt so this is uh annalise's friend this is Penny Dollar Buck, and you can see she has these nice shiny bracelets, which are physics animated. She has these bracelets here, and I tend to design uh, characters with visual elements if I can connect them to other characters and show some sort of relationship that they have with those characters. Uh, I do try to do that as well. So say, for example, these two are best friends. Uh, and one way that I can communicate that visually is that um, Annalise has this uh, sort of green sweatband on her wrist and these cool gold uh, bangles. And then on the opposite wrist, you have her friend Penny, and she has different styled bangles, but she has a purple wristband to sort of offset that. They both have a very uh, comfortable, breezy summer look to them, which shows that um, they aren't necessarily uptight, they're quite relaxed, um, they're quite easy going, and, you know, they probably enjoy being outside in the sun. Uh, she's got these, what are these, capris? Is that what we call them? Um, but there's a distinct difference in the texture. So you can see Annalise, um, her pants, this isn't even like a, a final draft, there's a much uh, better uh, revision I have where there's more detail in the in the material as you zoom in it's like infinitely detailed with the cloth um, but her pants are quite neat clean and tidy uh, and you, then you have a look at uh, Penny's pants and they're quite um, worn and Penny's is a bit more outdoorsy than Annalise and maybe she's a little bit more clumsy as her clothes seem to be a bit more worn and and scratched so uh, but she still likes this pair of pants so she's still wearing them so there we go and then you have the older sister of Penny, you have Tira. And both of these characters also appeared in Galaxy Bound Curse on the Game Boy. And how are we on time? Oh, wow, we're running close to 20 minutes. I better start wrapping this up here. But we've got these fun earrings. Uh, oh. Well, you've got, okay, see, it's very difficult to control Unity, ever. You have these fun little uh, uh, earring here you have the Earth, you have a little rocket ship, and then you have the moon there. She's got one on the other side as well. She works for uh, the Space Astronomical Science uh, Studies. Uh, uh oh, better check my notes. <laughs> uh, it's a bit late at night, so I'm having a hard time recalling uh, that um, the meaning of that acronym right off the bat. She has this sort of athletic-looking pants with this kind of fun-looking high-vis stripe. Maybe you can go jogging and be high vis. Uh, but she, in terms of her bracelets, she actually has um, two. So calling back to this 
visual uh, element that both uh, Annalise and Penny share. You have Tira, but hers are a bit more practical than the other two, while the other two have them that maybe they're just more visual stylistically. This has a watch attached to that one. It's a little uh, wonky. I need to adjust that. And then uh, on the other side, she actually has, uh, I think one measures, yeah, uh, barometric pressure. And I think the other one, I think that's uh, uh, at, um, moisture content, uh, humidity in the atmosphere and uh, temperature. So there you go. So uh, with those design elements, you can see these characters all visually seem to be related, you know, even vaguely in some way. But you can tell that she is a bit more practical uh, and she has less uh, jewelry, but still shares some de design philosophy with the other two characters. I've, I've prattled on a bit. Uh, anyway, I hope you have enjoyed taking a look at that. I'm, if you guys are interested in, in taking a look at more characters, let me know uh, and I'll do another video. Uh, but I, I didn't think I was going to... I don't think I was going to ramble for that long. So anyway, yeah, there's a bunch of characters there. Um, you probably recognize a few of them, but I try to keep them all interesting in some way, and I try to keep them visually connected with each other. Uh, and hopefully um, this video was entertaining for you. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for playing the games, and, and especially thank you for telling other people about the Silver Falls games, and I appreciate everyone out there that that enjoys the series so uh, i'm working on finishing up campfire stories for the nintendo switch then i will be working on white inside its umbra which will be an exclusive for the wii u and then likely i'll probably get to silver falls gaiden which again i would like to put on the wii u but i'm go also going to put that on as many other platforms as possible and those other platform versions will be free so i just want to make this game um for anyone that isn't uh familiar uh, with how I sort of do the Silver Falls games as I, I produce them, uh, put them on the platform for people to buy so they can support the studio. And then to show my thanks, I'd like to make a free game um, in between the the commercial games just to say thanks and to give people a way to enjoy the series more uh, because you guys buying the game is, is very important to me, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is you're enjoying the games and which is why I like making the free games uh, that way people who haven't seen the series can also jump on in and see what it's like and then you can spend your money on another game because I want you guys playing as many games as possible enjoying all the games that there is to play out there. So, hey, um, well, I've really just rambled on and on and on. So take care, be good to yourself, stay healthy, stay safe, stay yourself. Okay, I'll see you around.